Professor Dave and Chegg here. We now understand the concept of spontaneity, as well as that of entropy, which is a measure of the dispersal of matter and energy in a system. Let us now examine the second law of thermodynamics, which describes the entropy of the universe. The second law of thermodynamics is probably the most difficult of these laws to understand due to this abstract concept of entropy. This law came about through studying heat engines on locomotives in the 19th century and the observation that there must be some heat lost by the engine that cannot be converted into work, meaning that no heat engine can be 100% efficient, not even a hypothetical perfect heat engine called a Carnot engine. To paraphrase the physics for our general purposes, we came to understand that heat spontaneously flows from regions of high temperature to regions of low temperature and not the other way around. This is what led to the concept of entropy. In this context, entropy is a term that was developed which represented the inevitable partial loss of a heat engine's ability to do work. It is a state function measured in joules per kelvin and it will be represented by the letter S. The change in entropy is given by heat over the Kelvin temperature for a reversible process, and a mathematical ramification of this expression is that the change in entropy is zero for a Carnot engine. But to put things into a more modern context, this law can be extended to say that the change in entropy of the universe will be zero for any reversible process, where the universe is understood to mean the system plus the surroundings. However, no process is truly reversible, so we should rather say that the change in entropy of the universe for any spontaneous process will be greater than zero, or that for any spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe is always increasing, which is another common articulation of the second law. This can be rationalized by thinking in terms of microstates and how statistical dynamics will favor arrangements with greater dispersal of matter. So, given that delta S universe is given by delta S system plus delta S surroundings, we can use this equation to predict whether a process will be spontaneous. If delta S universe is positive, the entropy of the universe increases and the process will be spontaneous. If it is negative, the process is non-spontaneous, and it is the reverse process that will be spontaneous. If it is equal to zero, the system is at equilibrium. That gives us an introduction to the second law of thermodynamics and the concept of entropy. Although this may seem overwhelming, it will make more sense as we begin to apply this concept to concrete systems. Professor Dave Furchegg, see you next time.